One of the things I'm most grateful for in my life is that I was born and raised in San Francisco. The diversity and the vibrancy of that city uh, really did, did shape me. I mean, what really influenced me was the passion of the sisters for the work that they were doing and for helping people. Growing up with Lil, she was the seventh child out of eight. I was number four. So she was easy, very easy to take care of, very determined as to what she wanted to do. My father would say to me at the dinner table every night, well, what are you gonna do when you graduate? And I'd say, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna enter the convent dead. Oh, that's good, he'd say. And one night he asked me and I answered the same answer. And my mother said, no, you're not. <laughs> so I was just shocked. I said, why? Because you're not ready. She finished high school at 17. So she wanted to go then. And my mother said, no, you have to wait a year, wait till you're 18. You have to get some experience there. Well, she was absolutely devastated. She was looking out for what was best for me. Uh, and she knew that I probably wouldn't make it if I hadn't, if I'd gone just out of high school. So I worked for a year at St. Mary's Hospital, loved that. And then I entered the community and my mother uh, said to me, you probably aren't gonna last two weeks. You can't stand anybody telling you what to do. <laughs> and of course, that's all I needed was a challenge. I said, yeah, watch me. <laughs> When she was uh, made CEO of Mercy Housing back then, she thought she would do that for a couple of years and go back to health care. That was kind of sort of the plan in the back of her mind. Little did we know that it would turn out to be 27 years. Well, my career in health care, you know, was about 15 years. And I felt like that has been every step of the way was a preparation for what I eventually did with Mercy Housing. So when I had the opportunity to come to Mercy Housing, I immediately saw it as health care. If you make the distinction between health care and medical care, medical care only accounts for 10% of a person's health. All the rest are, uh, is, is impacted by environmental factors. And the biggest one of those is a decent place to live where people you know, feel safe and can develop their potential. Lillian is committed to the mission of the organization, to the values of justice, mercy, and respect as it relates to the residents in our properties and the communities we're trying to build. And it's that commitment that's really driven Mercy's success along with the terrific contributions of the, the staff and the other people who contribute to its work. There's a lot of people who would have said, no, the important thing is we need to build houses, we need to make money. She never made a distinction between mission and business. She would say mission and business are the same, and our job is to try and enrich these people's lives, not just give them a box to live in. Most CEOs are concerned about bottom lines, shareholders, um, and that's exactly what Sister Lillian is concerned about. And her shareholders are the residents of Mercy Housing. One term to describe Sister Lillian is life-giving woman because she has shown care and inclusion of all sorts of people, starting with her family, with her uh, sisters, uh, with those in need, and by the selection of the most remarkable men and women to uh, inhabit and enliven Mercy Housing. She was able to, just through her skills and her tenacity to really build Mercy Housing into what it is today, with, of course, millions of people helping her. Seriously, millions. And that's another part of the Mercy Charism. Uh, charism is like the spirit, the family spirit. It it's involves, you know, other people in helping you do whatever you think you need to do for the good of the people, because nobody can do it themselves. Things, the problems are too big. So you enlist everybody you can get to listen in whatever you're trying to do. And that's certainly something that she has done marvelously well. When I think about Mercy Housing, I think Sister Lillian has built a legacy. Mercy Housing stands alone, uh, in my mind, for what affordable housing is all about. I have no clue how Mercy Housing will look in 10 years. I can say generally, I think it will be larger because the need is, is getting larger every day. It will be smarter. Uh, we may be doing things very differently than we're doing them today, but I think the, the heart and the essence of the work will still be there. The mission will still be strong. The core values will still be permeating this culture. I have absolutely no hesitation passing on this uh, reign to Jane Graff. I am so proud of the staff and 
and the sisters. It's hard to find words to describe the power uh, that the sisters have and that I have been so privileged to be a part of. For a while I was sad as we visited the, uh, the sponsor communities that um, we may no longer be around 50 years from now or we'll be around in a very different way. Um, but as I've visited with the staffs across the country, I'm not worried about that anymore. Uh, the staff have the spirit. They're here because they believe that this is a, a worthy, noble work. So I, I have a great trust and great faith in handing on the, the legacy of the sisters to the staff at Mercy Housing, staff and the board, and, uh, and I will be praying for them every day. Just a huge thank you to everyone who's been a part of Mercy over the years. Uh, you have made a difference. You have made a huge difference in the lives of the uh, people that we're trying to serve. You give, you give people hope. That's the important work of what we do.